Out of all the features on my channel, I bet this was the one you guys were least expecting to come back, and the one I was least expecting to come back. This one was a last minute decision. Uh, this is going to be the 11th episode of Rapid Fire Reviews, a series that I kind of subtly ended in the month of January of this year because I kind of wanted to actually focus on doing full reviews on EPs. Considering the series was primarily composed of EPs and a couple albums that I feel like I just needed to skip over and didn't have a lot to say about, this is kind of a similar situation, other than the fact that this is going to be mostly albums featured on this episode. In fact, every single album on today's video is actually going to be a full-length record. And the reason for this decision is because there are six full albums dropping this Friday, July 15th. All five of the ones that I'm going to touch on today were ones that I was going to do a full review of, but as you guys can see, I'm getting really behind and I really don't have time to record full reviews for all of these. A couple of these I really did want to, but I'm just going to touch a little bit on them. Another thing that's going to change about this series from the last episode that I did is that I no longer will be doing number ratings for any of the reviews that I talk about in these, just for different various reasons that I don't feel like discussing at this point. So without further ado, let's get into this edition of Rapid Fire Reviews. Kicking off, we have the newest studio album from Boys Noise, Mayday. I can comfortably say I was a really big fan of this album. I didn't necessarily want to do a full review just because I haven't been a fan as long as a lot of people and I didn't want to make a fool of my Myself. This album is basically experimental house meets techno and hip-hop and it works together really well making for some of the coolest and most experimental house bangers I've heard in the last few years. Like I said, lots of really hard-hitting tracks on this one. There aren't really any emotional down points here and there. But that's not the kind of thing you'd come to expect from Boys Noise. I definitely think this one is a huge step up from his last project, Strictly Raw Volume 1, that I also did a mini rapid-fire review on last year. I would strongly recommend this to anyone looking for a bit more full-flavored house music. This one's a really deep on a lot of levels and I really like this production from Boys Noise. Next up we have Above and Beyond's second acoustic album aptly titled Acoustic 2. Uh, really not much to say here. It's a gorgeous album as always. I really am a huge fan of Above and Beyond. There's not much difference between this one and Acoustic 1 other than the fact that there are a lot of new music on this. This one practically should have just been called We Are All We Need acoustic sessions or something like that because most of the tracks on this come from their last studio album just because most of their greatest hits were on the acoustic one. Of course we do see some old ones come in here including one of my favorites off their group therapy album Black Room Boy and I really loved the acoustic version they did on this one. And I may be right, I may be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure they had Richard Bedford come back on a couple tracks, which was really cool considering he was completely absent on both of their acoustic and on their We Are All We Need studio album, which was a little bit of a disappointment when both of those dropped, but I really liked his appearance coming back onto this one. If you loved acoustic one, you're gonna love this one too, especially if you were a big fan of Above and Beyond's last album. Next up we have the debut studio album from Paul Comrade. This one is called Nights, and this one originally caught my ear because of its stark similarity to Haywire's jazz-infused EDM style. I wouldn't necessarily say this thing directly rips off from any Haywire styles, although some things are very similar, like synth presets and things like that. In fact, it's very, very different from Haywire's newest album, Twofold Part 2, probably sounding a little bit closer to where Haywire went with his early singles and with Twofold Part 1. I think this artist is a very good rising talent and I'd love to see where this guy's going to go in the future. Definitely got a bright future ahead of him. If nothing else, this album made me a new fan of Pomrad, and I'll definitely be following his music in the future to see where he's going and maybe find out about a couple really awesome record labels that are putting out arguably some of the most unique electronic music in the scene. And hopefully you guys will see me reviewing more artists like this in the near future. The next one is the second studio album from English liquid drum and bass duo Fred V and Graphics. This one is called Oxygen, and this is one of the ones that I was really looking forward to doing a full album review of, but I just don't think I have the time to be able to dedicate and really dissect this one. I've gotta be honest, I really distanced myself from a lot of drum and bass music. I am a big fan of this album though. I really like Technomatic's Desire Paths album, which actually made my top 10 albums of 2014 list. They've actually got an album coming out pretty soon. I think that might be one of the ones that is coming out this Friday, if I'm not mistaken. I think one of the things that works really great about this album is that the guys don't just stick to drum and bass in this entire thing. It doesn't sound boring. It doesn't sound repetitive. Of course, you can hear their drum and bass roots in a number of tracks. Probably close to half of these are just straight liquid drum and bass, 
but there's not many boring points on this record. I really like the good chunk of this. You have your hip hop influence in some spots, and especially in other places, I can see people from the trap and future bass scene definitely wanting to come in and hear this. If you're a big fan of future bass, especially, I can see you really digging this album. Also, if you're a really big fan of light, melodic, liquid music, melodic dubstep, and liquid drum and bass, you're definitely going to dig this one as well. And if you really like EDM pop and fusion, I think you're going to love this one as well. I think the big highlight on this album is the first track, Ignite, which has one of the most beautiful intros I've probably ever heard in a song. I was just staring, jaw-dropping while I was listening to this song of, of how beautiful it is. And of course it is a drum and bass song, but it does have one of the sweetest and most tear-jerking instrumental intros ever, along with some really beautiful vocals by Amy J. Price, who features a few times on this album, and her features are probably some of my other favorites on this one. Another great thing about this album is the live instrumentation that's brought into it, especially with electric guitars. I thought that was one of the things that really made this album stand out from other drum and bass albums. If I've got to be real, this is probably my favorite album from a drum and bass group since Pendulum's immersion in 2010, and that's saying a lot. This one is very good and I'm hoping to get my hands on a copy pretty soon. The last one I'm going to talk about today is a little bit different and a little more controversial. This is the newest album from Seattle-based Christian rock band King's Kaleidoscope. This one is called Beyond Control, and it's been bringing a lot of controversy recently because it is labeled as an explicit album, something that isn't often seen in the Christian and gospel genre. I think at least on genre tags on iTunes, I'm pretty sure this is the first album ever to be featured in the Christian and gospel category that's had an explicit label, which is just crazy. Of course, there are a number of hip-hop artists that identify as Christians that curse quite a bit in their music, as well as artists like John Bellion. We saw P.O.D. do it back on their Murdered Love album, which caused a bit of controversy, but those were never really identified in the Christian and gospel genre, just Christian artists kind of doing their own thing. Although I didn't think it was absolutely necessary, I think to put the point across as an artist and as a band and trying to really be honest with your music. Keeping the F word in the song, a prayer, I thought was very fitting. Unlike a lot of people criticizing this album, I don't think the swearing in this was unnecessary. If nothing else, it really helped bring out the emotion that this track was trying to push, and it does it very successfully because especially on the second half of this song, this is just beautiful. And we hear the lead's vocals just screaming and crushing uh, in his interpretation of Jesus Christ. If I've gotta be real, this is probably my favorite track on the record. In my opinion, there weren't a lot of other highlights on it. If you really like that folky alternative rock brand, of Christian music, you'll definitely really like this one, and if you're a fan of their classic tunes, you'll probably dig this one as well. If you guys have listened to any of these albums, let me know what you think of them in the I've been wanting to cover a bunch of these for a long time, so it was really fitting that I pushed them all out. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this 11th edition of Rapid Fire Reviews, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.